everyone today i'm going to do the chapter for quadratic equations as far as this chapter is concerned it has got its niche in j advanced in j means you will get a direct question from this chapter or an indirect question which will be used somewhere in between the question let's start our topic the most important terms in this chapter is the first of all it's polynomial what do we mean by polynomial polynomial is a expression in which you have a variable and they give out that variable and what is n in this expression n will be a non negative integer and can be 1 2 3 0 but n cannot be non negative if n is negative this will not be polynomial a a is what is the leading coefficient and there is a little term called degree what is degree degree is the maximum power of the variable which we have in a polynomial expression this is n so n is what is the degree of the polynomial now we'll come to the term quadratic expression and equation students always get confused that in the difference between the term expression and equation I explained it over here. What is a quadratic expression? Whenever you are writing a polynomial in terms of quadratic expression, this is just a quadratic expression, right? Where and if you equate this quadratic equation to a constant, then it becomes an equation. So if you are going to equate an expression to a constant, that expression is going to become an become an equation. What do we mean quadratic? What is called as quadratic? Quadratic it refers to the maximum. Degree of the expression that is two. When the degree is two, it's called quadratic. That is why this is called as quadratic expression. Now come to the roots. If we have equation, then we must be have must be having roots of those equation. So what are the roots? Roots are defined as the values of x satisfying the quadratic equation. If this is our quadratic equation equated to some constant k, and there will be certain values of x which are going to satisfy this equation. So those values of x will be called as roots. And one of the most important facts to be noted down is that the maximum roots which a polynomial can have will always be equal to or less than its degree. Suppose a polynomial with the expression n, its degree is n, which means that this polynomial expression is going to have only n roots at max. And if this is a quadratic equation, the maximum value of the n is two, so at max, quadratic equation will have two roots. Now there is another term which is used most frequently in this chapter called identity. What do we mean by identity? When we have an equation, suppose a quadratic equation, the maximum roots the this equation can have will be equal to two. But if this equation holds true for every value of x, then it's called an identity. Suppose you have a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero. If this is an identity, then a equal to b equal to c will be equal to zero. If I put it over here, then I can see that this quadratic equation is true for every value of x so now what we can say about quadratic identity is that when a quadratic equation is true for every value of x whatever we are considering in the real number that equation will become an identity as if we are now have pointed us into the quadratic equation so we'll see how we can find the solution of quadratic equation there are two methods which we can use to find out the solution of quadratic equation the first one is factorization method and the second one is the hindu method Also known as Schrader Ajayi method. In the first method, that is factorization method, what we do is split the middle term, and in the Hindu method, we convert into whole square and then find out the values of roots. Suppose this is a given quadratic equation, that is a x square plus b x plus c, and alpha and beta are the two roots of this equation. So by using factorization method, we can say that this quadratic equation can also be written as a will be taken outside x minus alpha into x minus beta will be equal to zero. So, if alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic equation, by using factorization method, we can say that alpha and beta are the roots. But by using the Hindu method, that is the Schrader-Ajayi method, what we can find is that the value of alpha is going to be minus b plus root over b square minus whole ac upon 2a, and the value of beta is going to be minus b minus b square minus whole ac upon 2a. So, what do we see here that this term is repeating a That is repeating both of the roots. That is root over b square minus four ac. There is a standard term given to this term that is called as d, and d is known as discriminant. The value of discriminant is equal to b square minus four ac. Now we will find out the relation between the roots and the coefficient of a given quadratic equation. Suppose I have been given a quadratic equation that is a x square plus b x plus c, and I have been given that. Alpha and beta are the roots of this equation. So from this equation, what I can say that the sum of the roots will be equal to minus b upon a. That is coefficient of the 
uh, variable x upon coefficient of the variable x square with the minus sign. And the product of the roots is going to be the value of constant upon the leading coefficient of this quadratic equation that is c by a which will be equal to alpha into beta if alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic equation. Now we'll do an example. Suppose you have a quadratic equation x square minus 3x plus 2 and we have to find the roots of this equation. So what we'll do, we'll use the factorization method and split the middle term. So minus 3x can be split into minus 2x and minus x and then we can take x common over here. So we will get x minus 2 in the bracket and then from here we will take minus 1 we will get x minus 2 in the bracket and then we can plug both of these two to write in this format so what do we have here? we have this we put this equal to 0 when this will be equal to 0 either this is 0 or this is 0 or both of them are 0 so equating both of them to 0 we get the value of x equal to 1 and the value of x equal to 2 so we can say that this equation x square minus 3x plus 2 is going to give me two values of x for which this will hold true and that is x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. As if a given quadratic equation is going to have roots, so there will be some trend in the roots and there will be some nature of the roots which we are going to define. The nature of the roots can be subdivided into two categories. The first one is real and the other one is complex. Whether the roots are going to be real or complex is defined by a quantity d that is called a discriminant which is b square minus 4 ac. If this d is less than 0, the roots are going to be complex and always occur in conjugate pairs. And if the d is greater than 0, the roots are going to be real and then, then we will have three different kinds of condition which will determine how the roots are going to look like. Suppose the roots are real and the value of d is equal to 0. When the value of d is equal to 0, both the roots will be equal and we will get this term in terms of whole square. And if the value of d is not equal to 0, but the root d is a, a positive integer, then what we can say that the, the roots of the quadratic equation, this ax square plus bx plus c, is going to be real and unequal. Right? But if suppose we have d not equal to 0 and root d is not a positive integer, which means we have this in terms of thirds, so we'll get a conjugate pair in real roots also, which gives us that if the root one root is a plus root b, the other root is going to be a minus root b. Now it comes, if you are going to plot this polynomial on the graph sheet, how it is going to look like. Suppose the given quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c, in this quadratic equation we have been given certain values that it is cutting the x axis at two points, which means it is having two real roots. So I can also say that if it is having two real and distinct roots, the d has to be greater than zero, it can't be equal to zero. And if the parabola is facing upwards, the value of a is going to be positive. And the general curve of a second order product, second order polynomial is a parabola, either it will be upward parabola or downward parabola. The facing of the parabola is either upward or downward will be decided by the value of a. If this a is positive, the parabola is going to be facing upwards, and if this a is negative, the parabola is going to face downwards. Thank you.